Hello and welcome to Geico Sports Night. I'm Maria Marino. Francisco Lindor put the Mets on his back in game one of their doubleheader. Unfortunately, couldn't carry them in game two. As for the Yankees, Gio Urshela was the hero in another late inning comeback. We'll have all the highlights and reaction, but it was a playoff Saturday night in New York as the Islanders tried to even up their series with the Lightning at the Coliseum. But the biggest game of the night took place in Brooklyn, and that's where we start. A game seven, Nets and Bucks at Barclays Center. Brooklyn without Kyrie Irving once again, but Kevin Durant certainly playing a big role. Second quarter, Nets lead is 5KD, open left wing for three, knocks it down. Didn't get the call, but still got the triple. Durant with 20 at the half as Brooklyn was up six. Third quarter, Giannis Antetokounmpo, all kinds of time and space. He banks it in, bucks up by one, going to the fourth. Fourth quarter, tied with two and a half left. Drew Holiday doing it himself from downtown. He drains it. Bucks lead by three. Last chance for the Nets. Six seconds left. Kevin Durant making his move for the tie. Yes, amazing. We go to overtime in game seven. OT tied at 111. Chris Middleton, the fadeaway jumper. It falls. 20th lead change in this game. Same score. Kevin Durant needs a two for the tie. Goes for the win. It falls short, a 48-point effort for Durant, but it ends with a Game 7 loss. The game summary is brought to you by GEICO as the Nets season ends by a final score of 115-111. Giannis, 40 points, 13 boards. Chris Middleton also had a double-double for Milwaukee. For the Nets, James Harden, nearly a triple-double. Durant, incredible again, but as he says, it wasn't enough. We want to win every game we play. We want to win a championship. We go inside out now with our NBA insider, Ian Begley. And no one gave more to this Nets team in this series than Kevin Durant. But what was the biggest factor in the team coming up short? I think it was just fatigue, Maria. And the idea that they didn't have Kyrie Irving and James Harden was the difference here tonight at the Barclays Center. Looking back on the Nets season, they obviously had Durant and Irving. They bring Harden in to try to get a title. How do you view this experiment uh, and the way things shook out this year? You know, injuries took a toll on this team all year long, so and there would be even more questions about the future of the big three in Brooklyn. The Nets have been through a lot this year, that's for sure. They will have more chances to bring that elusive title to Brooklyn. We'll see how that pans out, and then we'll judge the experiment. Ian, thank you. Thanks, Maria. The Islanders trailed 2-1 in their first two series this playoffs, but won game four and won the series, trying to do the same to the Lightning at the Coliseum. Early first period, three on two, Kyle Palmieri rings a shot off the post. Two posts for the Isles in the first, but scoreless after one. Second period, a different story. Check out this pass from Brock Nelson. Finds Josh Bailey, who delays, then beats Andre Vasilevsky. Islanders lead it one zip. Eight minutes later, shot from the point by Cal Clutterbuck. Look at the rebound for Barzell. 2-0 Islanders on Barzell's sixth of the playoffs. Still in the third, Adam Pellick centers. After a deflection, Matt Martin gets it and backhands it home. A three-goal second period for the Isles for a big lead. Third period, 3-1 now. Tyler Johnson loses his defender, makes a nice move, and scores from the left circle. Lightning with two goals in three minutes. Final seconds, Lightning shorthanded, desperately trying to tie. Ryan McDonough tries a spin shot, and it's blocked by Ryan Pollock. A literal game saver, and the Islanders have tied the series at two. We're just getting started on Geico Sports Night with plenty of baseball on tap after an up-and-down Saturday for the Mets. Their offense has been a bit streaky, but is that something to worry about? And over in the Bronx, it's becoming a theme these days. Get down early and rally late. We'll show you how it happened this time when we come back. Game one of a doubleheader for the Mets, who were taking on the Nationals. Top of the first, Francisco Lindor. Up with a man on, facing Joe Ross. And Lindor hits a home run to center field. His seventh homer of the year gives the Mets an early 2-0 lead. David Peterson got the start for New York in the third inning. He gets Trey Turner to strike out looking. Fourth inning, Alex Avila goes down swinging. Peterson threw four and two-thirds innings and only gave up one run. It's 3-0 in the fifth. Lindor hits another home run off Ross. This one to right field. His second home run of the game and eighth of the season gives the Mets a 5-0 lead. 
It's 5-1 in the seventh final inning of the game. Trevor May facing Josh Bell. Two on, no outs. Bell grounding into that 4-6-3 double play. Next batter, Josh Harrison. And Harrison goes down swinging to end it. Mets win game 1-5-1. Here's Francisco Lindor on how he views himself at the plate. Power hitter to me is somebody that can hit consistently. To game two, first inning, Robert Gesellman on the mound facing leadoff hitter Kyle Schwarber, and he hits a home run to left center field. His 14th home run of the year gives the Nats an early 1-0 lead. Fourth inning, now 3-0. Schwarber up with two men on facing Sean Reed Foley. Schwarber hits a three-run home run to right center field. His second homer of the game makes it 6-0. Top of the six, Kevin Pillar facing John Lester. Two on, two out. Pillar strikes out looking on a ball that looked way outside. Lester catches a break, gets out of the inning. Seventh and final inning, Jose Peraza facing Lester with a man on, and Peraza hits a two-run home run to left center. His fifth homer of the year, and it's a 6-2 game. Later in the inning, James McCann facing Brad Hand with two on and two out. McCann grounds out to third to end the game. Mets lose game two of the doubleheader 6-2. And with more on the frustrating loss, here's Pete Alonzo. It's a long season. Yankees looking to get back on the winning side after losing the opener to the A's. Top 5-2-1 Oakland, Domingo Herman in a bases loaded jam. Matt Olson beats Herman with a hit against the shift to left center. That scores a pair and makes it 4-1. Nestor Cortez would take over and keep it at 4-1 going three scoreless. Giving the Yanks a chance to come back in the six, Gary Sanchez gets one in a big way off Chris Bassett. The deep fly stays fair into the left field seats. 11th for Sanchez. It's 4-2. Seventh inning. Two out. Hitting for Aaron Judge against Birch Smith. Well struck single scores Clint Frazier from third. It's a one run game. Later in the inning, Giancarlo Stanton reaching out for this well played single against Yusmero Petit, Judge comes around from second. Yankees have tied this game at four. Eighth, still tied. Gio Urshela stands in. Jesus Lazardo, 99 coming in. Urshela turns it around deep to center. It's gone. His ninth, 5-4 pinstripe, still in the eighth. Two on for DJ LeMayhew, another clutch single. That'll score both base runners. 7-4 Yankees, they would need those insurance runs. Aroldis Chapman in. It's 7-5 now. Two on for Matt Chapman. Uh, Aroldis wins the battle of the Chapmans. 103 on the gun. Seventh time the Yankees have won when trailing into the seventh. Aaron Boone praising reliever Cortez for giving them the chance. Nestor was, you know, was terrific. Let's get homeschooled with John Harper. And Saturday was the fourth game this week. The Yankees were trailing and rallied for a team that was fielding questions about accepting losing. Should they be getting some credit now for their mental toughness? Yeah, I think so, Maria. I think the story for this season is far from over for them. But let's talk about the Mets. Francisco Lindor single-handedly won a game for them. How does it change things for that team if his bat is able to carry them here and there? Yeah, it's really important, Maria, because they need a guy like that. Maybe this is the time it finally happens for him. Yeah, hopefully the best yet to come. Because the Mets offense has been somewhat stagnant of late. Is that an issue that could take care of itself, though, when some reinforcements return from the injured list? It could. All good points, as usual. Harp, great to see you, and thanks. Thanks, Maria. Mets fans have seen a lot of this recently. Jacob deGrom throwing a bullpen session. So will he make his next start on Monday? We'll hear from the MVP candidate coming up. Back to our top story. The Nets season has come to an end in a game that will be remembered for a long time. The Bucks beat the Nets in OT game seven, 115 to 111. For Kevin Durant and company, no doubt a disappointing end to what many considered a championship or bust season. Time for homeschooled as we bring in John Jastrzemski. And JJ, why did the Nets, why could they not close out this series? Well, Maria, I think they ran out of gas, quite frankly. Let's not forget, Milwaukee was under a lot of pressure here, too. They had early exits in the playoffs. The last couple of years, there's been a lot of criticism around Giannis. So I agree with you. you got to give them some credit. But as far as Brooklyn, you talk about the injuries. Do you give them somewhat of a pass for the way this season ended? Yeah, a little bit. Listen, obviously, they're a much different team. Fans around the league will get no sympathy. They will have no sympathy for Nets fans. But to your point, 
This isn't the last chance they have to bring a title to Brooklyn. JJ, thank you. Still to come on the show, good news regarding Jeff McNeil, but not so good news on Joey Lucchese as the Mets might need to find another fifth starter. Stick around. Saturday was Jacob deGrom's 33rd birthday, and he celebrated it, kind of, by throwing a pregame bullpen session. The two-time Cy Young winner believes he aggravated his shoulder during an at-bat on Wednesday against the Cubs. That could mean he doesn't take any swings in his next start, which is still scheduled to be Monday against Atlanta. Surprisingly, the Mets put Joey Lucchese on the 10-day injured list with left elbow inflammation. Friday night against Washington, he threw five and a third innings of shutout ball. But with doubleheaders scheduled for Monday and Friday next week, the injury comes at an inopportune time. On a positive note, though Jeff McNeil's game for Syracuse was rained out Saturday, Louis Rojas confirmed the plan is to activate McNeil on Monday, coming off his hamstring injury. And that'll do it for Geico Sports Night. I'm Maria Marino. Thanks for hanging out and have a fantastic Father's Day.